Good morning, YouTubers, and welcome to the mess hall here at Dr. Jet Laboratories. It's kind of cold to go out in the uh, sting bug works right now. Stand by. So I thought I'd talk about mounting the turn fin on the MHZ Miss Madison. This makes uh, the build sequence... I don't know. I've lost track. I think it's probably episode nine or part nine. Part nine. It's plan nine from outer space. Edward D. Wood's greatest movie ever. <laughs> plan nine. Okay. If you look at my turn fin, you'll see it's vertical and then has a curved end. <sighs> More often than not, when I'm mounting a turn fin on a scale-looking or scale-style hydroplane like this, I like to put a little angle on the turn fin. But if you can see here by my camera angle, and I don't know, but the back of the sponson is angled back, the back of the sponson where the turn fin mounts. And I was thinking, now if I put an angle on the turn fin, is that going to induce a turning angle like a rudder action? Now if the turn fin's perfectly vertical, swinging it back and forth on here would only change the angle of dangle of the curve. The flat side, let's imagine for the sake of this discussion that the turn fin is just flat. The turn fin would always be aligned with the direction of travel, provided that where it's attached is vertical. If the attachment point, let's just say this is my bracket, and this is how it attaches. If my attachment point See, I, I like to draw these angles to the ridiculousness. So if I take this angle and make it really ridiculous, and I turn my turn fin really ridiculous, I can see that it's imparting a rudder action. It's no longer parallel to the surface or, or to the direction of travel. So like that... It's parallel to the direction of travel, but as I turn it, it becomes a rudder, and in this case, a lifting device. So sometimes when I'm looking at these angles and how things work, I like to make a dummy and take it to the ridiculous. You know, move your angle to 45 or 90 degrees and, and see what happens like this. And you can get a mental picture. And then when you have just a little bit of angle and just a little bit of angle, you'll know that that little bit and that little bit is producing other forces other than just straight in line. So that's kind of a, a little crutch I like to use when thinking about this. One of, one of my favorite ones is a sloping forward rudder hinge line on an airplane that actually imparts some elevator. If you look at a Mooney, Mooney aircraft, the rudder line faces forward. So what happens in a stall spin situation? You hit opposite rudder and that in effect gives it a tiny bit of down elevator to help you come out of that spin. That's why Mooney has a forward sloping uh, rudder line. It helps in a spin because a forward sloping hinge line gives you rudder and a tiny bit of elevator. So just some things to think about. Okay, so we're getting down to short strokes here. The hardware is mounted and it's rock solid. I still have to shorten the shaft by Oh, another eighth of an inch or so. Have to file a flat here. Got to put in a shorter stainless steel screw. My rudder has the tiniest little bit of slop in it. And I can take about 50% of that out right here in this arm. And so I'm going to trim this side of the arm off. Hmm. 
Interesting blue. Oh, it's tape. Uh, trim this side of the arm off and then JB weld this arm to this rudder bracket right now. It's the only thing holding the arm to the bracket is the pin and the mechanical fit of the parts as they come together like that. So that's that. Okay, inside, I have the servo mounted rock solid. I, everything in here is rock solid. It's totally jetted. My plan for today, my plan for today is to try and get some foam cut out to match the inner shape of the bottom of the sponsons. So when I'm sliding batteries up into the sponsons, they'll sit on some foam. So what I'll do is I'll cut the foam, get it to fit. I'll paint the foam or, or paint inside there with a little bit of contact cement, put the foam in and hope I'll have enough contact cement just to hold it from moving around. And then I'll try to cut out more, more foam and shove it in there and leave a perfect pocket for the batteries, and then I'll make a piece of jam foam to hold everything in place. The batteries are going so far forward, and, and the battery leads are so short, I may have to make some sort of extension cable because I'm gonna have to wire these in parallel. So I'll have to make a parallel plug of some sort. So I may wind up throwing some additional wire in there just to get everything to fit. Uh, so that's going to be today's project, is working up in the hidden zones here. And then, I mean, this this sucker's darn near ready for uh, for testing. All it really needs is is batteries, radio, and a cooling system. Uh, oh, for the cooling system... Here's what I'm going to do. Since I'm using all this G10 throughout here and not going carbon fiber, I'm going to make a G10 plate that will take the place of this dress washer, or I may put a longer bolt in here and just put that piece of G10 in here. So I'll put a little piece of G10 coming out and then your standard, uh, you know how on uh, monos you have the little water pickups that's so just a little standoff and a tube? So I'm going to put that pickup on the end of this piece of G10 right here in the prop spray. So I'll have a little G10 bracket coming out here, a pickup, and a hose coming into here. And my plan for the water is I'm going to go up here. I may try to run along this interior side of the, the sump here to give me room for my battery. So I'll go behind the, the receiver bracket, try to get it under the motor, go to the speed control, the motor, and come out over here somewhere. I like coming out on the left so you can see water as you're going by. And so the, the big thing is going to get be keeping my cooling runs out of the way of getting the batteries in there. So um, there you go. Now we're getting to the really challenging part of getting into these tiny little spaces. This is where if you had a 42-inch catamaran, <laughs> you wouldn't have problems like this. You know, <laughs> big old gorilla hands and a 42-inch catamaran perfect match you know smaller gorilla hands and these little hatches not so good i need to find like a five-year-old that uh has good manual dexterity <laughs> okay i think i've pretty much covered everything i need to talk about today i've got rock solid hardware we're ready to rock and roll my little uh standoff thing here works really good this is really solid i did use a big turn friend turn fin bracket just because i want this sucker solid oh you notice i haven't put this other hole in that's because i don't have a one-eighth inch drill 
that's long enough that I can get my drill motor in here and not hit the hull. So I ordered one of those uh, log drills so I can get in here and drill that. I, I don't want to drill it in an angle and then tap it. It's just, uh, it wouldn't be jetted if I did that. So that's my plan. I'll, I'll drill and tap that hole in a little while. And there you go. Any questions, comments, I'll leave them down below. And until next time, jet out.